So the last topic um, for today that we didn't have time to talk about during class is um, just general mechanisms of long-term potentiation and also um, long-term depression. Uh, that's the sloppiest D I've ever written, which is saying something. Um, so what we talked about today was calcium flowing in through NMDA receptors um, and that, activate, that then activating CAM kinase 2, which then adds phosphate groups to some AMPA receptors that are floating around in vesicles. And because they're inside the, the postsynaptic cell instead of on the surface, they are not receiving neurotransmitter. But then once they get phosphorylated, they, go, they become inserted in the membrane. And then the next time our presynaptic cell fires an action potential, there are more AMPA receptors there. And that increase in AMPA receptors causes the response to get stronger. And that is one of the main mechanisms of long-term potentiation. Um, keep in mind that, that, that um, the NMDA receptors are important for the change, but they don't actually have any, they don't actually get involved in the normal communication because they're mostly plugged up with magnesium ions. What determines the strength of the connection is the number of AMPA receptors that are present. But actually, um, you're not going to be tested on this, so you can tune out for the next 30 seconds or so, but there are actually presynaptic um, forms of long-term potentiation. Um, and one form of long-term potentiation involves voltage-activated potassium channels and GS-associated presynaptic neurotransmitter receptors that, active, that cause cyclic AMP and activate protein kinase A. And through some mechanisms that are not fully understood, they increase the probability of vesicles fusing to the membrane. There are also, on the postsynaptic side, and this is something that we're going to talk about tomorrow that you will need to know, also protein kinase A, GS, cyclic AMP, protein kinase A mediated mechanisms that change the number of AMPA receptors. And that is something we're going to talk about tomorrow and something that is something that you are going to need to understand. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, one thing that, that we also are going to talk about tomorrow that you do need to understand is um, the sort of textbook long-term depression. Um, and this involves calcium coming in through NMDA receptors as well, or sometimes through voltage activated calcium channels in the postsynaptic cell. And then this calcium coming in, instead of activating calmodulin, activates a protein called calcineurin which is a protein phosphatase. Um, actually, it turns on something called protein phosphatase 1, phosphatase. And then this protein phosphatase will remove phosphate groups from our NMDA receptors. And now the NMDA receptors come back into the cell, are no longer on the surface, and so our synapse gets weaker. In addition to that, and then this is something that you don't need to know, so you can again tune out um, if, if you're not going to be tested on, but just so you're aware, there are metabotropic glutamate receptor mediated forms of LTD, um, which metabotropic glutamate receptors, particularly G, it actually turns out that these are GQ associated metabotropic glutamate receptors, um, which we normally think about as activating neurons because they can turn up calcium channel activity, but it turns out that these GQ associated um, uh, metabotropic glutamate receptors can also cause AMPA receptors to be removed postsynaptically and cause a synapse to become weaker. Um, that's a bit confusing and a bit beyond the scope of the class, but if you take um, my biochemistry of the brain class, you'll learn a little bit more about that. There's also, in some areas of the cortex, um, uh, where sensory information is processed, a presynaptic decrease in neurotransmitter release that is mediated by endocannabinoids. These are the active uh, chem chemicals that mimic the active ingredients in marijuana, um, and they activate cannabinoid receptors on the presynaptic terminal, which leads to a, these are metabotropic receptors that lead to a long lasting decrease in the release of neurotransmit. And so um, these endocannabinoid mediated receptors, and they also in some cases involve postsynaptic metabotropic glutamate receptors, postsynaptic voltage activated calcium channels. It's a complicated system one that you're not going to be tested on, but just so you're aware of the different kinds of long-term depression and long-term potentiation that exist, um, uh, I wanted you to know that, about them. The ones that you do need to know about are the hippocampus, um, uh, about the, the postsynaptic long-term depression um, involving the removal of AMPA receptors um, via calcium flowing in, um, which is the reverse of the long-term potentiation mechanisms that you need to know, 
where calcium comes in, activates CAM kinase 2, and then, or sometimes protein kinase A, which we'll talk about tomorrow, and causes the insertion of AMPA receptors. So those are the two that you need to know about.